Hey everyone, this is Mike from the Comic Book Trove here today with another Omnibus review. And today I'm going to be taking a look at another classic Silver Age era Omnibus. This time this is the Captain America Omnibus Volume 1, collecting material primarily from uh, Stanley and Jack Kirby. Uh, there are a few other creators in here, but those are definitely the main two who we see work from in this book. Now this particular version that I've got here, this was the second printing of the book, which came out back in 2016. So I've had it for quite a few years now, and I'm not sure if it's been printed again since then. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, regardless, I'm pretty sure this book is currently out of print anyway, which uh, is frustrating, I know, for anybody who might be interested in it. But nevertheless, I think it's worth giving an overview of it, sharing some thoughts on it, just in case uh, it maybe helps you make your mind up as to whether it's a book you want to go looking for, see if you can find a copy of it, or of course, to keep it on your radar uh, if and when another reprint gets announced, because... Chances are there will be. You know, I say with most out-of-print Marvel omnibuses nowadays, there aren't many that I don't think would get another printing somewhere down the line. And this is certainly a book that I imagine will do at some point. But let's take a look then. So this was the uh, standard variant cover, I think, when I picked this book up. Classic Jack Kirby image here, the cover to Captain America issue 100. And taking a look around the rest of the dust jacket, it's a pretty standard uh, classic Silver Age era omnibus uh, format, really. We've got the Cap Captain America... Uh, just title there and then the main creators here. So I've already mentioned we've got Stan Lee, Jack Kirby and a small but very significant contribution by the great Jim Steranko as well, which comes at the end of the material in this book. And I'll definitely show that off and discuss that uh, when we get to the end. Um, on the back then we've got the cover gallery. Again, just the classic style that you tend to see on the uh, omnibuses collecting material from the sort of silver and bronze age eras. Really cool to see it. It's basically the cover of each issue that you get collected in here. And at the bottom there, we've got the contents. So nice and simple. Tales of Suspense, issues 59 to 99. Then Captain America, issues 100 to 113. Uh, because the series was retitled, basically. The um, Tales of Suspense comic was just retitled to Captain America with issue 100. But for the first chunk of issues in here, it does come from uh, issues of Tales of Suspense. During the era in time where Cap was sharing that book with Iron Man. So although the back doesn't really clarify that, worth pointing out, you don't get the full issue of each of those Tales of Suspense comics because you're only getting the Captain America half of the stories, not the Iron Man half of the stories. Those are collected in the Iron Man Omnibus Volumes 1 and 2, um, or at least Volume 1. I can't remember how that's split up in those books. Um, but yeah, you might, you might maybe think that that's obvious, that you wouldn't get the Iron Man stuff in a Captain America Omnibus, but I think it's worth clarifying because... I remember when I first looked at this book years and years ago, um, I wasn't entirely sure whether I was going to get a huge amount of Iron Man stuff in this book as well. But no, you don't. It is just the cap issues. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so we've got the contents page here, and it is a large number of issues in here, at least it appears to be. Well, it is. Um, but uh, the reason they're able to fit so many in here is, again, because it's a split comic, Tales of Suspense with Iron Man. So each of these Tales of Suspense issues, they're only about 10 to 12 pages long. So... They are pretty quick reads, to be honest, when you're going through the majority of this book. Um, you get a couple of introductions like this one from Stan Lee that were previously written um, for some of the earliest Marvel Masterworks, I believe. So this introduction, for example, is from 1990. So, you know, hardly a new one. It's a pretty old introduction there, but obviously still valid because it was just Stan talking about some of these earliest issues in here. And then straight away, uh, you get uh, Tales of Suspense issue 59, which is the first comic with Cap starting to reappear in solo stories for the first time in the Marvel Age of Comics in the 60s. So prior to this point, Captain America had already been re revived and reintroduced into comics in the Avengers, back in the classic Avengers issue 4, where he'd been found frozen in ice, thawed out, and teamed up with the Avengers and became their leader shortly afterwards. So all during this time, um, Cap was a part of the Avengers and appearing regularly in that series and then also appearing in this uh, ongoing solo stories and first in uh, Tales of Suspense and then eventually in his own book as well. Now, most of the stuff in here is Jack Kirby artwork. So we get a lot of classic Kirby penciling throughout this book. You see plenty of examples of that as we flick through it. Um, I will say, you know, I've mentioned before, I'm a big Silver Age fan, especially, you know, Marvel Silver Age in particular. So I have a soft spot for all this stuff. But um, even with that in mind, I will say that a lot of the stuff in here, for a while anyway, at least in this first volume of Captain America, 
Um, not the strongest material from this era overall. I think there were stronger series than this one. Um, there is definitely some fun to be had in it, but I feel like early on, through a good chunk of this first volume, there's not a lot of character development going on for either Cap, and there isn't a huge kind of supporting cast of characters either that really keep things interesting. And I think that that was quickly realised because before too long, in fact by this point, just a few issues into the book, we're at 63 here, Tales of Suspense issue 63, and for a good while the comic series changed and it became a World War II era comic, a kind of untold tales of Captain America in the Second World War kind of thing. So yeah, it's almost like they couldn't quite realise what to do with Cap starring in both the Avengers and in this book in the present day, so they thought... Let's just show some war stories instead, set in the past, and then that eliminates that problem. But yeah, these particular stories are not great. I mean, there's a definite silliness to them, as there often are in Silver Age comics, where you've got Cap, you know, and his, uh, his young partner, Bucky, who is just a young boy here, Bucky. Um, and the two of them are just these kind of soldiers in the army, and nobody knows that uh, Steve Rogers is Captain America. So he has to kind of do these random chores and things as a soldier that his commanding officer makes him do, like cleaning the toilets and stuff like that. Then sneak away to put on the Captain America costume and fight the Red Skull, for example, before making it back to boot camp in time to not get in trouble for going AWOL and stuff like that. So it's a bit silly and ridiculous, but, um, you know, if you're into the Silver Age style, you'll probably have some fun with it. If you're not into this era of comics... There's definitely other series that I'd recommend that you checked out from the Silver Age and the 60s before, you, before I'd say diving into this one. You know, for example, Amazing Spider-Man is always going to be my main go-to one for anybody looking to get into anything from the 60s at Marvel. Um, this would come a bit further down the list, in all honesty. But that's not to say it's terrible or anything like that, just that there's also nothing too exceptional about it for quite a while. Um, but, yeah... Hopefully you're getting a decent idea of kind of what it's like as you're flicking through. I mean, another thing is if you're a Jack Kirby fan, there's definitely plenty of Kirby artwork to enjoy. If Kirby isn't quite your thing, you're not a big fan of his style. If you just think it all looks a bit dated, I understand. I get that point. Um, I do personally enjoy it, but I can get why it wouldn't be for everyone. Um, there are some hilarious examples of writing by Stan Lee, though. Uh, this page in particular, we've got these German soldiers captured cap and i absolutely <laughs> i love but find it completely ridiculous the way that uh, lee was writing german dialogue with just the occasional one or two german words otherwise it was like english written in a very poor german accent sort of style uh, and that's hilarious to me i just think it's great and it keeps happening consistently throughout these uh, comics definitely one of the um, funnier elements of the book to me um eventually it kind of comes back to being in the present day, the book, after a significant run of being World War II era stories. Um, and ultimately towards the back end of the stuff in here, in fact when the series retitles and becomes an actual Captain America comic, then I think it starts to get stronger because we start to see an actual um, cast of supporting characters introduced. For example, you know, Nick Fury starts to appear regularly in the stories and uh, Cap works with S.H.I.E.L.D. quite regularly so that makes it more interesting um, this story here this is a pretty interesting one with this uh, giant robot thing called the Sleeper pretty sure it's a Red Skull plot yeah it's even got the Red Skull's face um, I mean it is a bit repetitive though I've got to say that I mean the Red Skull you're going to see a huge amount of him throughout here and quite often what happens is there'll be some kind of scheme that's clearly um, bubbling up, things are starting to happen and Cap is trying to figure out who's behind it and 9 times out of 10 it turns out to be the Red Skull to the point where it's almost a running joke like, as I was reading through it I was thinking there's literally no way this is going to be anybody other than the Red Skull and then lo and behold on the next page somebody would take off a mask and it's, yeah, it's the Skull um, he is overused I think during this time they relied on him a bit too much I mean he's a good villain but a villain kind of loses their impact a little bit in my mind if they are brought forward into the stories again and again. And that does kind of happen here. Um, yeah. I think this is an issue here illustrated by John Romita, though. Just a fill-in issue. He wasn't a regular penciler or anything like that. But, 
yeah, always cool to see. I mean, big fan of John Romita, so, you know, always happy to see some of his artwork. But then back to Kirby again here. And as I say, you know, you're really going to see Red Skull back again. Um, yeah, he just turns up so often. But yeah, so as I say, you see a whole ton of, um, of Jack Kirby artwork in here, which for me is, is cool. Um, but I would say probably, unless you're a big Silver Age kind of Marvel Comics fan, you could probably give most of this series a miss. In fact, the Tales of Suspense stuff, I would say you probably could skip that. I'd probably recommend you just start reading it when it becomes Captain America with issue 100. Which is a little bit confusing that that series starts with an issue 100, but it's only because it continued the numbering of Tales of Suspense. Um, there's this guy here. I can't remember what his name actually is, but uh, what's he called? Oh yeah, I do. Batrock. There it is. He's a French guy, I believe. He's kind of a hand-to-hand -hand expert. He shows up a few times throughout the stories in here. But other than the Red Skull, I think there's not really another kind of classic villain or particularly strong villain that turns up and I guess that's kind of why they used the skull so much but yeah I don't know bit of a double-edged sword as I say if you've got a good villain but you overuse him kind of loses his impact but uh, I don't know maybe let me know what you think if you've read this era of Cap these comics at any point what did you think of it you know these tales of suspense issues did you find them a bit hard to get into as I did um, maybe you enjoyed it a lot more. I think there's a lot of action scenes. I mean, that's that's what's really going on in here. It's it's a it's a story and a series that focused more on the action, with Cap getting into a lot of fights, um, more so than you know, kind of quiet character moments. Not a very character-driven story or set of stories, for the most part in here. And I prefer it when time is taken to really. Uh, develop the characters a little bit more, you know, step aside from the action for a bit and have those those quieter moments in the story. And they start to come, you know, eventually they start to come. Um, with the introduction here of, uh, you know, Sharon Carter, who becomes a love interest for Cap. That becomes, a, I think, become a bit more interesting, I think, when that gets introduced, just because it's a bit more of something going on, you know, it adds a subplot here and there, where it's it's not just... Cap fighting, you know, Nazi sympathizers who want to carry on the work of the German Reich and all that. Because that's a recurring storyline in here quite often. You know, even in the present day, there's still these kinds of lingering remnants of the German regime that, uh, that are popping up here and there and he's got to try and fight and put them down. And the Red Skull is often there right in the middle of things. Introduction of, uh, not introduction, inclusion of letter pages though throughout. I mean, that's something that Marvel tend to do in these books, these books from the Silver and Bronze Age. And I'm always happy to see that because it's just nice, I think, to get that insight into what readers at the time were thinking of these books and these stories. How many times has the Red Skull showed up already just as I flicked through this book? It's crazy, honestly. Couldn't leave him alone. Um, but I like how this uh, this character, Sharon Carter, I like how she's um, quite capable, you know, like not something that was too common at the time in stories like this to get sort of strong female characters. And I'm not saying that she's perfectly written or anything like that, but she's an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. So she can handle her own for the most part. So it's pretty cool because she's not just the damsel in distress kind of character. I mean, sometimes she is and Cap does have to rescue her, but she is also capable of fighting alongside him now and then. So pretty good to see that. I just think it's more interesting. Um, but we're into the cap issues now and that's why I think it's starting to become a little bit more interesting at, at this point as we flick through flick through these final issues in the book here. Um, yeah, Kirby pages like this though. That's the sort of thing that Jack Kirby did stuff like this, these splash pages with crazy gadgets and machinery and technology. Um, I don't think anyone's ever really done that better than Kirby. He had a very distinct way of drawing scenes like that, and it was really good, something he excelled at. So those are pieces of Kirby artwork, pages like that, that I always enjoy.
but yeah, lots of good stuff in here, you know, certainly a fun read overall, if not the best Silver Age read, still a good read. Um, as I say, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you're not a big fan of the era, but otherwise I think it's worth checking out. Another great Kirby page there. And we're getting to the point where, um, in fact, I think this story, 109, I think it's an extended recap of um, Cap's origin story from way back in the 40s. Because, I mean, obviously Jack Kirby, I haven't even mentioned this, but Kirby was, of course, one of the co-creators of uh, Captain America back in the Golden Age in 1941, I believe, he first appeared, along with Joe Simon, of course. So this was actually the second time in history that uh, Kirby was penciling or working on a Captain America solo series. And even when he left this book, it wouldn't be the last because, of course, he came back again in the 70s for a couple of years and both wrote and drew the Captain America series at that point in time. Um, but here with issue 110 then, so we get some issues here right at the back. I think it's three issues in total with artwork by the great Jim Steranko who immediately puts his signature style on this book. I mean, I've praised Steranko a whole lot already in the S.H.I.E.L.D. omnibus, which of course features a lot of his work, in fact the majority of his work on any one series in comics. Um, but uh, yeah, he also worked on Captain America briefly and uh, brought a stunning style to the book. I mean, this is just an excellent image. Double page spread here, pure Steranko. I love the dynamic way in which he you know, Drew comics, you just put so much kind of, I don't know, they just look so cool. They just look so well presented. Um, so exciting, you know. There's just something special about the way he did comics, I think, that nobody has ever really quite matched. I mean, these are comics from, you know, the 60s, and it still looks experimental and fresh and, and, and great now. You know, it doesn't really look dated. Like, Kirby is great as a penciler as Kirby is. When you look through a lot of pages of Jack Kirby artwork, you can tell it's an old comic. I feel like that is not as much the case with Steranko artwork on pages like this. I think it's dated better overall. It's a style that still has an element of, uh, of looking quite modern to this day. I mean, this is just beautiful, you know? Really, really great. I mean, I could praise Steranko all day. Uh, again, another fantastic page here, you know, Cap leaping into action. I mean, some of Steranko's anatomy is sometimes questionable, like with this wavy, bendy leg and stuff, but it's all so stylistic and stylized that um, it doesn't seem to in any way take away from it, you know? It, it all works within within the context of what he's doing in the scene, I don't know. Maybe you disagree with that. Maybe you're not as, as much of a Steranko as a, a, admirer as I clearly am, but... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's great stuff, in my opinion. Then there's an issue here, 112, which, uh, in which Steranko didn't work on this particular issue. I think this is a fill-in story, really. Um, yeah, going back to Neymar discovering Cap. But then the final issue in this book, which we're about to get to being 113, um, is Steranko again. And look at these pages, seriously. I mean, how could you not like this? <laughs> if you don't like it, I mean, fair enough, but I don't understand. It's just, it looks so great to me. Um, but this is a pretty cool story as well. So this is a story in which um, Cap kind of fakes his death. Seemingly dies, but, uh, you know, unsurprisingly. It should come as no spoiler to anybody, given that Cap comics have continued to be published over the 50 years since this, um, that he didn't really die. But there's a fan he comes back here in this dramatic scene to take out S.H.I.E.L.D. Not S.H.I.E.L.D., Hydra. Just beautiful pages, honestly. I think these three issues of Steranko artwork feature the best artwork in this whole omnibus for me. Even knowing how great, obviously, Jack Kirby is, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. These are just fantastic. But that's the end of the book then. So that's 113. That's the final issue collected in Volume 1. I do have Volume 2, so I'm happy to take a look through that as well and showcase that for anybody who's interested. Just let me know if you'd like to see that. Happy to cover that at some point. Um, in the back, we get some of this Not Brand X stuff. I don't like those comics. I mention that every time I ever see it. 
Um, but then there are some cool kind of sketches and original covers on the back. Some Jack Kirby work here. That issue, of course, to uh, sorry, cover of course, to issue 100. Some of these reprint comics from over the years. Collected some of these stories again. Not a huge extra section, but um, you know, pretty cool. And that was an alternative cover for the book, actually, by uh, Ron Garney and Jason Keith. Okay, so that is the Captain America uh, Omnibus Volume 1. Classic Silver Age, 60s Marvel stuff. Um, let me know what you think of this material, if you've read it before. Um, whether or not you know, you're interested in picking it up after having seen this overview, if I've helped swear your mind one way or the other. But otherwise, thanks as always for watching. I appreciate it if you've stuck with me all the way through. And I'll be back again soon to discuss something else.